Okay, this is one I've been uh, wanting to get to, to a for a while. Um, it is uh, get it without the glare. La Révolution Française, the uh, French Revolution. This is a game by Azure Wish Edition, a French company um, that put out a lot of real interesting games um, in the 1990s and then stopped. <laughs> I think they've done maybe one game uh, after 1998 or 99, um, some Napoleonics game uh, that they did back in the 2003 or so. Uh, I don't think they exist as a company anymore. Um, but I've watched uh, Callendale's videos on Board Game Geek, and uh, he's done most of the of these AWE games, including this one. Um, and uh, this topic is of particular interest to me, uh, so I was considered myself fortunate to find a copy of this um, at a decent price. It took me a while to get to the table, though. Uh, I did not the copy that I got uh, again decently priced, but was missing um, one of the important components of the game, which is the random events table. Um, these are, as you can see, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, they have many and varied effects on the game. And so trying to play without these would be, uh, I suppose it would be possible, but it would not be very interesting. So fortunately, um, some of the other friendly souls on the internet uh, we're able to get copies of this random events chart in English, I should point out, because the game is originally in French, so um, there were French versions of this floating around on the internet, but I could not find an English version, so fortunately somebody scanned one, scanned a copy for me, and uh, um, I was able to get the English version of the random events table. So I've now finally been able to get the game to the table to play it properly. So. Um, the rules, uh, like I said, the originals are in French, um, the English translation is good, um, you know, I'd, I'd heard that generally the rules for the game, um, uh, were a mess in terms of clarity. Um, I, I don't know, having read them now, I don't know that I would call them a mess necessarily or or unplayable, um, but there is definitely a lack of the sort of precision that uh, you would be used to in a technical, um, not necessarily, I don't, I don't know if you would consider this a war game, but for this sort of technical strategy game, uh, you know, this is an area control strategy game. There's military elements. Uh, you do have military units on the board. Um, you can see one there. It's one of the revolutionary armies there in uh, Bourget. Um, and one of the things that can happen during the, the French Revolution uh, as you play through is you can be invaded by foreign armies. So there is army movement, there's combat, um, but the, the game does it's not feel particularly like a war game to me um, so much as it does more of a multiplayer uh, diplomacy style uh, or negotiation type game. So, um, nonetheless, uh, you would think that for a game um, that is as complex as this, and it is fairly complex, uh, that that the rules would be much more precise than what they are. So it's there's no way since I don't read French, I can't read the original French rules. So there's no way for me to know. Um, if the rules were just written that way, or if it was something that was lost in translation. Um, my suspicion is, is that it was they were written that way. Um, the, that French players have had some of the same difficulties uh, as English players in terms of, of figuring out the all of the technical elements of the game. Um, so I've, I've now played a turn of this, um, and it was not as daunting as I'd thought. I mean, there's there's plenty of play aids out there now um, that, that people on Board Game Geek and other places have put together 
uh, some really great charts and tables and things. Um, somebody's done a real clear uh, sort of sequence of play here. Um, some of the other stuff that is available out there. Um, you've got these these regime charts. Um, the game is played uh, with the back against the backdrop of these different regimes, and so you start in the legislative, and then as certain events. Uh, unfold in the game, or certain actions are taken by the players in the game, um, or certain things happen for them. It allows these other regimes uh, that you may be familiar with if you know about the French Revolution, such as the Terror, uh, the Convention, First Republic, Thermidor, uh, Directorate, and the Second Terror, or the there's your Royalist Coup, that's the Royalist Twin. Um, these, so you, you play the game against the backdrops of these different regimes, and whatever regime is the backdrop uh, currently for whatever turn you're on will affect uh, um, how things interact, uh, or, or how certain factions work, or how certain factions interact with each other, or how factions interact with the various um, elements that you keep track of uh, throughout the game. Here you've got the commune, economy, the clergy, and the coalition, which is uh, essentially foreign military activity. Um, so all of these things will interact differently with each other um, depending on which of these regimes that you're in at the time. Um, and then other things, you've got the uh, different factions in the game. Um, and again, somebody's put together some nice uh, sort of summary charts here. The game itself comes with play aids too, but people have, have put together um, a little more maybe user-friendly uh, uh, play aids for the different factions. So you've got the Friant faction, which is kind of your current government at the start of the game. Um, sort of a reactionary, but not revolutionary faction in the game, closest to the Royalists, although still too liberal for the Royalists. Uh, you've got the Marais, uh, who are um, sort of a swing faction. Uh, they, they are kind of the deal makers. They can swing between the, your reactionary and revolutionary elements. Um, and so they spend a lot of the game kind of negotiating between different camps uh, in order to stay alive. Uh, we've got the San, Sans Culot, which are the uh, sort of your ultra, ultra left wing, almost communist faction. Um, the uh, Montagnard, the Mountain, uh, they are the, again, about as left as the Sans Culot, but not quite as radical or revolutionary as they are. Um, the Montagnard are where some of your fam famous uh, quote-unquote villains of the French Revolution, such as Robespierre, Marat, Danton, uh, they all came out of this particular faction. Uh, these are the guys who institute the terror. Uh, the Gironde um, are another faction that you've got there, which are the... They are slightly more to the revolutionary side than the Friant, but they're sort of in opposition to the Friant, I guess. Um, uh, so they are fairly powerful in the game. Uh, again, the, the, the sort of power bases of these factions are going to be the Gironde and the Friol, but those, those fortunes can shift um, as the game moves on, uh, especially as it shifts a little bit to the left and the revolutionary side. Um, then you've also got the Royalist action. These are the guys who want to restore the monarchy. Um, their goal is to uh, foment... Ideally, foment revolu or, uh, revolts and, um, or even better, uh, get a declaration of war and have military armies, foreign armies, invading the country. Um, their best case scenario is for the government to be unable to handle the foreign intervention and for the people to go running back into the arms of the monarchy. Um, so, those are the six factions in the game. Um, it's, it is a six-player game, but. You can play with fewer, although I think really to see all the elements of the game, I think you want every faction in the game. Um, so like I said, I've played one turn, uh, which I've kept track of here. You, you start each turn by declaring objectives for your particular faction, and uh, I've sort of tracked mine here. I've kind of aped Callendale um, in his videos on how he was keeping track of, of the different objectives for each side, or for each faction. And uh, so you can see I've tracked here which factions were success, successful in their objectives with a check mark, and those who failed with a X'd out. Um, and then there, you know, there's the random events will have an effect on how the uh, on how the different charts, uh, the different tracks on the board, will be handled uh, in the game. 
and uh, the objectives, of course, will will determine um, how the the fame of each of your factions works, and the fame is very important uh, for determining the power uh, of the factions going into the game and how successful they'll be able to pull off um, whatever events or activities they want to try and accomplish on the map with their various personalities. So this down here, the Renome track, um, very important in the game. Uh, so the, the random events or the uh, accomplishment of objectives is what affects that. Uh, that particular track. Um, and then you've got laws down here. You can pass laws in the game, which again, as you can see here, will have an effect on uh, the different uh, tracks that you're keeping track of in the game. And uh, that's all determined here in the Assemblée Nationale. Pardon my terrible French. Um, and your different factions will have different levels of power in here. You can have the deputies of various factions um, swinging from one side to the other or throwing their votes in uh, with one side or the other. Um, in addition to those, so you've got those tracks tracking everything. Uh, the game proper, uh, you know, you're exercising activities throughout the game on this map of France here. Uh, the different factions control different areas. You can see numbers there that indicate how much money each uh, region will give each faction that controls it um, per turn. Um, so just looking at the map as a whole here you can see um, after the first turn uh, that there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, Friant uh, chits out there and you've got and then a lot of Marais chits out there. Um, not as many Gironde. Uh, the Gironde got kind of hit um, the Friant sort of moved on a, lot, on a number of their spaces during the turn. Uh, the only thing they were really able to do was grab Mets here from the Friant, uh, which was one of their objectives. They were successful in that regard, but they do have sort of a power base there in the northern part of the country. Um, the, the regions don't matter too much, uh, except you can see those arrows on there. Um, that's where foreign armies will move, so, so there is some effect on where people are or where control is, depending on when um, foreign armies come into the game. But uh, for the most part, um, you know, control can switch around from any region in any place or any of the the regions in any place. Um, so you don't really have to have a, a region, a group of regions clustered together to be more effective or anything like that. Uh, really, um, I had the, a lot of the factions make their moves based on just dollar amounts that regions would pay for. I had, uh, in this case, I had the Montagna and the San go both go after um, this province here, which you can't see um, the name of because these chits are in the way, but this is, uh, I had them I had them go after uh, Rouen there, and uh, the, Mont the Montan yeah, faction was not successful in gaining control, but the San Colot, which who went right after them, uh, were successful in gaining control of that, so that'll be an extra $300 in their pocket. And the two leftmost, uh, the Montagnard and the uh, San Colot, both start out fairly weak in terms of cash. Uh, the Montagna only has Lille up there at the start of the game, and the uh, saint Colot only have uh, Marseille, so, uh, which they retain control of. So, um, so you do battle, or not, well, figurative battle, um, for control of these different regions. Um, you use your, your the various personalities uh, in the game. Pardon my zoom here, I just got a new video camera a proper one that can zoom. Uh, my videos before I was using my phone which had no zoom capability so it's nice to be able to zoom into things on the map and still maintain focus uh, if I can. Uh, but you can see here the different personalities in the game. Uh, if you want to do activity in a particular region for your particular faction you have to have uh, personalities there in the particular region in order to carry those things out. And you also need a good deal of money um, to, to take out to do under undergo any activity in the game, really, uh, be it passing laws, or arresting people, or gaining control of regions, or starting rebellion, or quashing rebellion, and so forth and so on. Uh, all that costs money, so that's one reason why um, these particular leaders or in the factions will want to try and control uh, as many regions as they can. Uh, in fact, that's one way for the royalists to try and win, is if they control most of the regions in the map, uh, they can just win the game that way, but very, very difficult for them to do. Especially if they start running out of money or if inflation starts running away and making everything more expensive, uh, things get more and more difficult. 
Um, you've also got an inset here for Paris, uh, a lot of the personalities. If you don't have plans for them if, or if they um, are particularly influential in Paris, you want to stick them in Paris for the turn. And uh, there they can affect laws, um, the passing of laws and swaying of deputies and things like that. Um, and then, of course, you've got prison here. When people are arrested, they're sent to prison. Um, the, the government is the faction, whoever controls the government. Um, and this, at the start of the game, it's the Friyon. It can change uh, depending on which regime, which we talked about earlier, depending on which regime is in control. Um, that has an effect on, uh, on who actually controls the government, which is tracked by the, the red, white, and blue tag there. Um, so you've got people that can be in prison. Um, and you can see the government here, the Friant, immediately went after some royalists and some Saint-Culotte uh, representatives and probably threw them in jail. Um, the Friant wants to try and stay in the legislative regime as long as possible, and by doing that, uh, by arresting people, they can help hopefully stay there longer, because when people are in jail, they're not out fomenting rebellion or controlling zones or whatever else. And then, of course, you get down here the guillotine. Uh, once the terror, particularly once the terror starts, uh, people are going to start losing their heads. This is the French Revolution, after all, so haven't gotten there yet after the first turn, but um, I imagine we'll see some chits in there before the end of the game. Uh, anyway, that's uh, just a recap, sort of brief overview of um, some of the elements of the game, certainly not um, in-depth at all, didn't really explain <laughs> nearly enough, but at least uh, maybe from watching this you can get some sense of uh, a broad overview of what's involved in the game and kind of some um, general goals and objectives um, of the factions or what the object of the game is and the means to effectuate that. Anyway, I'll do some more videos uh, as I do more turns um, and uh, we will go from there. Thanks.